salutations. Welcome to the conversation. I am your host, the Queen of Shade, and I would like to formally, cordially, gleefully, and joyfully welcome you to One on One with the Queen of Shade, Season 2. There are going to be a lot of surprises in this season. You're going to see a lot of familiar faces, faces that have been here before, and some new ones, and it's going to be an amazing journey of discovery. Remember, these are not interviews. These are interviews. Let us see what you your soul looks like. So pull up a chair and don't forget to comment, like, share, and most of all, subscribe. To follow the show, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, The Queen of Shade, and you can follow the show there. There's also a podcast version of the show, but that hasn't come all the way out yet. I did a soft launch, but that will be coming out too. Season one was absolutely crazy. There are 253 episodes of season one. Yes, I was running off of pure adrenaline, pure spirit, pure excitement, and we got that done. So you can expect season two to be just as magnanimous and crazy and explosive. There will be some great conversations, conversations that you will be able to take things away from and apply to your natural life. 253 episodes. Let's see what we do for season two. I love all of you and thank you for supporting, watching, commenting, liking, sharing, because baby, we're on this journey together. We're not on here alone. I'm not on here alone. My guests are not on here alone. You're right along with us. So once again, welcome to the conversation. Now let's get to the conversation. You follow the queen of shame. I'm not the only one I'm not the only one I'm gonna catch you boy I'm not the only one I'm not the only one I'm gonna catch you boy Do they know how your wife and kids Punish your son Cause his daddy likes my kind of fun And at night you always call my phone You're always asking if I'm all alone And when I tell you that I need your love You come running just to feel me out Yannick Yanzo Thomas. Salutations, Queen of Shade here, coming to you with a very special presentation. Moving full speed ahead with season two of One on One with the Queen of Shade has been an amazing experience. We are talking to people all over the world, gorgeous people all over the world, and it is truly a delight to bring them to this platform and just have a conversation. We're not prying, we're not digging, we're not, you know, trying to get information that the world doesn't know. We're just here to have a conversation and to record it for you. Because most of the time that I have these conversations with my guests, we're friends just catching up. Having said that, I have a young man sitting before us today that you should know. If you don't, you live under a rock, but that's not my problem. 
But um, he is an amazing man who hails us all the way from St. Lucia. So he's a Caribbean. He's a Caribbean man. And he's going to sit and he's going to talk to us today. And we're going to enjoy him together. He was here for season one of One on with the Queen of Shade. And we just had to ask him back for season two. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Mr. Yannick Yanzo. Thomas. <laughs> I love the applause. <laughs> it gets everyone. It gets everyone. Hi, darling. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. I'm doing better than ever. How are you? Um, you know what? I'm really, really good. I'm in a good space. Um, I was doing some, uh, I do these like one-on-one -on -one, like mo motivational monologues that I post on social media. And I was doing one before this and it was kind of heavy. Mm -hmm. but, but you know what? I, I like to do those kind of monologues because it also reminds me how, of how far I've come, you know, that I'm not there in that low place anymore. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. We're good. I was ready for this. I couldn't wait for this. I was very excited about this. Yeah. You look, you look the same, and that's great. <laughs> One year later, still the same, and that's good. That's what, that's what we all want, right? Well, you know, I turned 42 this year. Oh, wow. Wow, well, yeah. I'm finally in the 30s, so. I know. You, know, you just had it happen. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Happy belated birthday. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thank you. When is your birthday? September 29th. You are September sixteenth, yeah, the sixteenth, yeah. So Virgo, Virgo, mm-hmm. Yeah. Virgo, I'm a Libra. Okay, okay. So <laughs> happy birthday, birthday! Thank you. I think okay. I did. I think I did do a birthday shout out for you. I think. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I always see all your stuff. I always see every time. Thanks for being a an amazing supporter. Thanks for being an advocate for us. Thanks for. Doing what you do, you know, spreading the recognition to the world of beautiful people, beautiful men, um, all shapes, colors, um, ethnicities, backgrounds, wherever you're from, Caribbean, whether the Middle East, Asia, China, America, everywhere. Thank you for doing what you do, because there's nobody doing it, you know? So, okay. I love that. Thank you. Well, guess what, Yanzo? I say thank you for that, but I am biased. I show you. I show blackness. <laughs> yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Well, as, I, as we yeah. should. You know, I just believe that we should. Like, the world gets... Okay. The world makes so much money off of us. And we get so much scrutiny off of us for just existing. Exactly. Like, yeah. our music, yeah. our style, our body types and structures you know mm -hmm. I'm, I'm gonna go there we have people that tan to be your color they yeah. go, and they are non-african so american non-caribbean and they go into tan to get your color and get this i was thinking about this the other day um even for building, when you're you know when you're a professional athlete and you're bodybuilding you Yes, they go in and they do the spray. Yeah, well, because that's how you see the cuts. You need melanin. Mm-hmm. You said it. That's how you yeah. see every line, every muscle. Yep, yep. Exactly. Yep, she, yeah, the light hits better with tan or melanated people, you know? I don't know if that's the word, but I made it up, yeah. Well, no, I say, I say melanated with you, so again, um, I've seen it be a word sometimes, but I don't know. That's why I, I usually make up words. <laughs> It's right? No, but get this. You're in St. Lucia. It's that dark already? Yeah, we're approaching Christmas, so yes, that's, that's okay. so you guys are you are an hour behind. Because <laughs> to be honest with you, I was I've been waiting for the, the past hour because it was five o'clock when I checked Eastern Time. I'm like, oh, it's only four o'clock. <laughs> so I had to go and do other things and come back for six. So, but in my time, which is your time. By in your time by four o'clock, it's dark already. You know what's so funny? It's dark out here too. So, so is that the reason why when I turned this camera on, you was like, "Here's the, the look on your face was like, finally, here's this bitch." No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Just make sure I have everything right. You know the setting right, and as you could hear, like you hear the crickets. Yeah. So you know, in the Caribbean, that's how you know it's nighttime. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, and so you are such a beautiful man. I remember having you um, the first uh, season. And, you know, we got to know you. And that was like, it was like my first introduction to you. I've been following you for a while um, yeah. on X, which is which used to be Twitter, you know. So I got to know you and I got to see you and very quickly became a fan. Very quickly. So. You know, being able to talk to you that first time, which was nearly, listen, my seasons are long. Season one, I talked to you two years ago. Wow. I thought it was last year. Time flies, time waits for no man. It was two years ago, yeah, and so. Mm -hmm. So I look this good two years later. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but you... Post-pandemic. Yep. Oh, God, you know. <laughs> right? no, two years um, was um, taken from us. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you look amazing. Oh, thank you. Try. I just took out my uh, my plaques yesterday. Mm -hmm. Wanted to give it a break so I could wash it, so I could do another style. So I'm giving my hair a break a little yeah. bit. Maybe for a day. Aww. Okay, so, so tell me. I mean, you, okay, so you went to school in the States, right? No, I went to school in St. Lucia. Okay. But I, but um, I did my tertiary level education or university from a school in New York. But there's a campus in St. Lucia or a branch in St. Lucia or an extension, whatever you call it. So I did that there. It's called Mono College. It's out of um, New Rochelle, New Rochelle, New York or something like that. Okay. Yes, I did that. So, but everything, all schooling was in the Caribbean, in St. Lucia. So I'm, I'm, I'm really local. Yeah. And you're yeah, determined switch up. You're determined not to leave. Um, right now I'm doing a lot in St. Lucia. I could leave if I want to be um because of what I do. I'm not really tied down to any job, so I work for myself. Um I'm a entrepreneur. So yeah. I take a lot of risks. Um, but yeah, so I'm currently um trying to get some some stuff going in St. Lucia and then surprise the world on what I'm doing, you understand? But for, yeah, but for now, I could travel if I want to, but I want to pay attention to what I'm doing in St. Lucia. But yeah, I can leave if I want to. Yeah. You sound like me. I'm up here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I, I'm preparing um, to leave. You know, France is where I first got my start years mm -hmm. ago. I was 22. You know this. I was 22. We talked about this the first time, but I wanted them to hear it in context. It, Paris was where I belonged. My new passport just came. I'm like ready because I too, that's the great thing my nephew said to me today. He was like, isn't it great to be able to make passive income? Super great. Yeah. It is. Because yeah, yeah. And the, the, um, I think the older I get, the more I realize time is actually the money. Not money is money. Time. The time is so important. Because if you're working for somebody for like 10 hours or whatever, you're going to be exhausted to do your thing. You now you have to find the time to do their thing and your thing. And most times people don't do that. They get, they get tired. So time, that's what the rich people love. Time. So I really value my time. Um, I try to work on that all the time because that's my biggest enemy. <laughs> but yeah. I agree. So, you, so I, yes, I remember you were talking about the Paris. Yeah, I remember. Did you, did you go there? I haven't been back, but I'm yeah, preparing to go. Okay, yeah. Because I remember we spoke about that and you're moving to Paris. Yeah. yeah. When I looked at the times, I wonder if that's the time in Paris. I didn't know where you were. I'm like, okay, now I know you're in Philadelphia. You wanna know why? Because I don't tell I don't tell everybody where I am. I don't want anybody to come knock on my door. It is true. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't wanna be like those um celebrities you post and then five minutes later they, they stalk you there and stuff like that. So you when you leave the the, the, the vicinity, then you post it. Yeah, you know, and, and you know, it's so funny, you know that too, because of, you know, being an entrepreneur and working online and having passive income. I'm so, it's so great that you said that because I can definitely relate. We don't post where we are at the moment. No, moment. You post after. You never post. Yeah. Because people are crazy in this world. If you see it on the internet, people die that way. Yes. So, um, you know? Yes, they are. And people, sometimes people use our uh, social media or whatever to try oh. to put on our downfalls or whatever. Mm hmm To stalk yeah, us. Don't say everything, you know? Yeah. They try to stalk us. They try to you know, find us. You know, here in um, Philadelphia, for it stopped now, but I want to say for like five years, Yanzo, I had somebody knocking on my door, leaving pictures. Wow. Drawing me pictures and leaving them on my door. Because I live in like this community, but it's not gated. Uh -huh. 
literally they would leave and i mean then they would come and knock on the door on like friday saturday and sunday night at like well actually in the morning like two or three in the morning and it was so crazy because it stopped when my nephew moved in Mm-hmm. My nephew was fairly aggressive, I'll just say. <laughs> my nephew was aggressive? Yes, he's fairly <laughs> aggressive. Uh-huh. <laughs> so he so kept I, them I, away. So if, did you, was it like a neighbor? Was it like somebody that stalked you from a, like a next door or whatever? My neighbors, I knew all my neighbors. This was a stalker from online, but he did not want to risk running into my nephew because my nephew is, in, is a night owl. He mm. doesn't sleep as much as I need to. So he's always up and he's outside of the house. He's patrolling. It's just something that he does. Mm -hmm. So the person did not want to fuck around and find out. That's true. (laughs) So it's fine. So how's the nephew doing? He's good? He's still still with you? Um, Yes, he's still here. He's 23. I actually actually spoke to him on this the uh, the other day. You have to see that one. He's so smart. So smart. Yeah, he's so smart. I, like, I, I love, it's so crazy. I love our minds because I'm still a black man. I love our minds. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, with the world undervaluing us, that's crazy. They know how much black people do. They know mm-hmm. how, how valuable we are. But the trick is if they can convince us that we're not as valuable, they can get us for cheap. Yep, yep, it's true. And I was looking at something because obviously, you know, because you're facing the same problem, the flagging on Instagram and them not knowing what they're flagging us for. When you ask them, they're like, oh, well, they're vague about it, right? Yes. There's this guy who started fan base. Like, someone told me, oh, you should start a fan base. So I'm looking into that and he's trying to value black people. Well, more everyone, but he's a black um, owner. So let's see what happens because honestly, I can't wait for everyone to shift from Instagram because they're clearly racist. They're clearly um, sexist. They're clearly, they don't have it together. They clearly use... Um, um, like the back end is people from like third world countries that barely speak English properly. And they use these people in mass numbers to try to get you and they're the miscommunication. They're doing too much and they're blatantly doing it with a lot of media training because the biggest media trainer is what's his name? Morseri, you know? So I'm just waiting for a new platform. I'm still just waiting it out because it makes no sense, man. And it makes me think too much. I don't want to think that they're just racist or this and that, but uh-uh. Too much stuff is happening to us black creators. Like, look recently, man. Uh, the same way you look for all uh, your black creators, I do the same thing, you know? I don't know if you know this guy, um, Marshall Price. He took his account. I know him. Right? Um, there's a lot of black creators. Just, it's there. Their account is not there, and they're not posting on the platform anymore. So, And I'm getting flagged, so maybe I might not be there anymore, you know? So that's why I'm trying to do TikTok, YouTube, and other things where like, my fans and my supporters could always get me. You know, but yeah, it's a learning experience. Everybody changes, the sun, the moon changes. So you have to just roll the punches and see what happens. You know what? I um I do media coaching as well because I've been in this business mm-hmm. for so long, 21 years. And I, t- I talk to a lot of boys. I always like a lot of boys on Instagram. I'm actually behind them, helping them. Mm-hmm you know, post and how they should post and framing it and editing it and showing it and doing it. So um, let me just give you one word of advice. If you lose your account, create another one immediately. Mm-hmm. Don't, be, don't be, I've had so many young men whom were so upset because they put in years to their account and it was taken from them and they had to start all over. Um, but I want to say this, the hard part is done. Because I'm sure you have multi, uh, multiple terabyte drives with all of your content on it. Yeah, I don't delete them. Exactly. So you just post them again. Yeah, yeah. I learned from from a very good friend of mine. His name is Tyson Brown, and they, I think he's on his um he's on his eleventh Instagram account, and he's like when they take it, he gets like twenty k, thirty k, boom, they take it. He goes back straight one time a backup, and he just goes. I just loves his determination to just keep rolling with these punches you know yeah so i know yeah with that industry or with that field in social media you need to always have backups you need to always be prepared for them to just say we don't like you anymore so we're just taking that away especially as a black person right right yeah. you and i have a friend in common uh dallas flashman wade he is on like his like umpteenth you know yeah 
but I love his, I love his energy. He's, I call him my MCE. He is always my man crush every, like every day because as soon as they take it from him, he starts a new Ooh, one. A new one, new one. Yeah. But if they never took his account, cause I know him personally too, yeah. this guy would have like probably 2 million, 3 million followers. Yeah. You know, but they, and then you could clearly see it's the app and people hating at the same time because sometimes he posts with his clothes on or he posts something like this and they say that's gang related or I'm like, what? It's, uh, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> you guys are getting hit hard right now. Very, very. And it's not just me. It's a lot of creators I see happening to, you know? I want to, I want to say to you and all the creators who are going to see this, please don't give up. Yeah. I get this. See, I tell people all the time, and I'm going to tell you, you know, this is my fourth Instagram, but people like you're an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. Most people that come to social media, I'm getting goosebumps. Most uh, people that come to social media, they come for the likes, they come for the views, they come for the comments, they come for the shares. That's not what you and I are there for. Neither is Flash. Mm -hmm. Neither is Marshall. The, mm. We're there because we're entrepreneurs. We're there to push a business. We're there to market a business. So yeah. our mentalities are not the same as every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I, I tell that all the time. You know, it's kind of crazy that they're there's they're like that because I'm under I'm under a lot of scrutiny too because what do I do? You post it. I see you it. Share it and then they take it yeah. down you know, as well. So yeah, yeah. So you guess I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very sorry. I'm just to me too. But you know what's crazy? Even with them, I'm permanently shadow banned because I just would not stop. I'm like, mm. I will. I was like, no, I will get my lawyer involved if I have to. Now this is your platform, but you, I will get my lawyer involved with for discrimination because mm -hmm. literally, I watch Caucasian. Get away, Scott Free. It's in. And I follow everyone to make sure, and I see it. Yeah, and then oh, yeah. they don't get flagged at all. So, but we know that these major companies just endorse the Trump campaign. So, mm -hmm. maybe yeah. that's what's happening. But you said something very important. The work has been done already because at the end of the day, when you post it on the platform, somebody's gonna download it and reshare it. So you like forever. So with, with Flashman Wade, me, there are like a lot of spam pages with our content. And sometimes these people just say, oh, go follow the real page or go follow this person. That's the actual person. You know, when you go through the comments, you see where's the at, and then they put the at. So yeah, you did the work, the work already. So you're kind of permanent on these platforms. Yeah. You know, just the frustration of, it, of the, the main platform being taken on every time. But yeah. all of the countries let's, let's do this. Yeah, you're right. Like, get this. I was talking, once again, I was talking to my nephew yesterday and I was not crying, but upset about it. Upset. It's funny that we're talking about this because I was mm. just upset about this. I was like, because for me, I've, I've done the, the platforms. I started on MySpace. Then I moved to Facebook. I didn't really get in, involved in Twitter, but I had a Twitter. Then, you know, like moving, then Instagram was the next thing. Now I'm building TikTok. Like mm -hmm. I've been with my guys, like a lot of my guys that I support on here, I've known them since 2003. I have a gentleman coming tomorrow that I'm talking to. Um, his name is Joshua J. Holland. And mm -hmm. I've known Joshua J. Holland since New York of 2003 when we were both trying to be fashion models. Like I've known these people for so long. So yes, I'm glad that you picked up that part because the thing is, like you said, you've done the work. I have four or five terabyte drives mm -hmm. full of my content. And I learned that back in 08 because in 08, I'm a singer, you know this, I'm a singer. Mm -hmm. So back then I used to do live singing for YouTube. That's what got me my first recognition to the, to the world was because they were like, it's somebody like, because when I would sing, I'm such a, I'm a counter tenor. So I'm a soprano. So people would be like, oh no, there's a girl in the room when there's a girl off camera, he's lip singing, you know, all these things. He's, it's not him. It's not him. So I ended up singing 2,500 different songs for YouTube to prove that it was me. And then when it, when they realized like, oh shit, it's him. Yeah. And the, then the hate started. Yep. Took my YouTube. 
And I'll never forget, I was like, I had a young man because see, this is what people don't understand about these platforms. We may not have hundreds of millions of followers, but we have influential people that watch us. Yep, it's true. Yeah, so what happened was um, an influential person in entertainment saw me and he told me on YouTube, he said, listen, you need to be backing up everything you do. You don't post it unless you have it backed up. And I was like, it like put a light bulb in my head. Yeah, I save your content. I drive content on clouds or whatever to save it because, yeah. Everything. Save it on as many things as you can. The cloud, the backup hard drives, the, you know, and because literally I'm in jeopardy of losing my account too. Mm-hmm. All of us, man, we're in the same boat. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm on my, well, my sixth six flag. Yeah. Six I'm flag for the year. So I'm trying to end strong with just six, but I know that's not going to happen because I'm going to continue posting me. I'm going to continue doing what I love doing and what people love doing and how my content continuously gets engagement from that. You understand? Because if I post something boring, one, it's not going to be fun for me and it's not going to be fun for the person following me. So I just, yeah, I'm just trying to be smarter about it. I was going to say, and I've watched you. I was going to say, I've watched you. I've watched you. You're you're now into like I just saw the the last one I saw where the Greek god poses. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, we all are. We're like that's the thing. Like, like oh, that's what I was going to say. My oh, my nephew said to me, "You're already mainstream because mm-hmm. you're in the consciousness of the world. Who the hell do you think is on social media? The world." Mm-hmm. So it's not, oh, you're just famous on the internet. No, the world comes to get on the internet. And when they get on the internet, they see me. And then when they get off the internet, they take their ideas and they tell their friends and they share that out, out there. I am exactly. on the yeah. for you. So are mm-hmm. you. And, a lot and, that's how, and that's how a lot of info, I look at you, that's how a lot of um, influential people um, get in contact with you. So like before it would be more about the Kim K's and the P, the mega celebrities, but these people just post for their brand and that's it. So I don't really, people really follow them to say for that. They follow us now because we have the constant content. They're like, Oh, look at this guy. And they reach out to that guy and you come from like a smaller creator to a big creator because Kim Kardashian shouted you out or Justin Bieber or whoever just shouted you, shouted you out. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the platform is now normal people, not really mega celebrities like football players or whatever. Yeah, they have the numbers. Yeah, they have the views, obviously, because of what they do and they, whatever. But they still watch us. Yes. So they need us. So we're like the pillars to the platforms, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. They watch us yes. to say, look at what this guy is doing. And boom, 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 this girl is doing. Boom, 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 boom. And you know so, what? Yeah. And you know what I love? Like you said, they are impacted by our lives, which is why I work all around the clock. Like people will say, oh, um, I had somebody say, bitch, do you ever sleep? And Mm -hmm. I said, I said, I sleep when you sleep. (laughs) Because when you're awake, I must be awake. Like, mm-hmm. like people don't understand when you are a public figure and an, uh, you're an entrepreneur, but your is your business is content creation. Yep. Because if something happen, you have to talk about it. You yep. Post about it. You have to create about it. Like yep. that's, that's the thing. But I I love being an artist too. But I'm talking. This is the pot talking to the kettle here because you're a Virgo. You know Beyonce, all of y'all, Michael Jackson, y'all are insane with y'all creation. I, yeah, I don't that's be perfect. Creative. That's like I don't like you. Know, I take. I do like, let's say I want to do a second for 10 seconds. I have to do like seven videos just to crop out the, the part that I want, the face that I want, the body that I want, the angle that I want. It's like, oh, and it takes time. Content creation takes like three hours for like a minute video. Yeah. You know, so, yep. Allow me to speak for the collective and for, mm-hmm. the, for the populace and say, we love you and oh, we you. love what you do. We love what you do. My, yeah. and, you know, this is another thing. They're messing with you, but as soon as you post, you're in everybody's feed. Yep. So, yep. Yeah, they try to shut me down, but I still try to make sure they share it. I still get shared. I still, I still try to push that barrier, you know, because I don't need to be on the explore page and get all these. Sometimes what I realize when I get on the explore page, yeah, it makes me more money. It gets me more awareness, but then you get more trolls, more people reporting more people doing this. So I'm just, I'm fine with the people that are currently following me. They like it. They share it. 
they come subscribe again they you know it's good like that um and then i'll make another account and another account so i'm on my way making a third account on instagram i named it yanzo hidden and i'm just posting all the the, the content that instagram took down because what i realized the bigger you get with following the more they look at you to take down your content but when you're like a hundred followers or whatever they don't take it out because I see bare nudity on Instagram and how do they get away with it? And sometimes that bare nudity is there from like months ago, a year ago and still up Their Their following is like under 10,000. They're not verified. Um, it looks like a spam account. So they leave it. But if it's an actual person, they take it down. So I see a lot of pages, like pages that promote women, have different women, a bunch of women. It's like so explicit, like, Whoa, how is that up? Um, privates are out lips are out i'm like uh, why is that up and me in a little underwear flag and a little underwear flag 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 you know so um it makes me realize that so i get smarter right so i start thinking like okay so that's uh, don't be verified make it look like something like it's not really you and if they take it down they take it down but more than likely they're not going to take it down you know because there's a lot of porn on on instagram yeah you know what i love you because you are such a strategist but you have to you know what's so crazy? I was gonna say that too. Yes, they won't mess with us until we get bigger. Like mm -hmm. it's the thing. They I'll post something and it'll immediate flag. And Point that's time. and the, but the thing is, that's because I have a lot of eyeballs. Yeah, a lot of engagements. I always see your engagement. You post it, millions of people oh, for yeah. a month or whatever. Every yeah. month. And get this. That's millions of people, and I'm permanently shadow banned. Exactly. So far as you, so they tried to suppress us, really. But yeah. you know, I too, I'm not even. And you know what's so funny too, Yanzo? Don't even make it about them. I'm not even trying to like fight the institution. I'm mm -hmm. not. Like I will. I take and I look. I ask them to review it. They say oh, we decided not to put it back up. That's fine, and I move on. I move yeah, on. I, I try to do the same thing. I don't. It, it's stressing me less and less now. Before it used to upset my entire day. And like wonder why, but now it's getting less like ugh, whatever. I just post somewhere else. It's it's spiraled there, or it's in different. It's on different platforms, you know. The moment I got to a hundred thousand, I got five strikes. I'm like, what? I went from one. I'm like, finally, I'm down to one strike. My account will be completely green. No more flagging. It's not flagging me for underwears now. It's not flagging me for like stuff that made no sense. I see. It's not my fault that I have a bigger bulge than a white person or another person. It's not. Why should it be offensive that I have a bigger bulge than you? You know? So, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't trouble me. Get this. They, I'm going to tell you why they do that to us. Because the, the apps don't want to create another viral sensation. Have you noticed hmm. that a lot of people aren't going viral anymore? No. I, it's not really a thing no more. And no. I tell you why it's not because they don't get a cut of that they don't get a cut of that so they don't want to make you a star push your presence to the world and you collect all the money they're upset with me and i get this they're upset with me enzo because i didn't join their monetization program mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah monetization thing makes no sense well i have bigger plans see mm -hmm. I'm a real entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. are you. So my thing was, I'm not going to, because I read their clause. They wanted original reels from you and they owned them. If you signed up for their monetization, you then worked for them. You created your, 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 your uh, information or your content for them. And they owned it and had the right to do it with it, what they wanted to. Mm -hmm. I said, no, thank you. And they, they, they badgered me for a year trying to get me to join the monetization program because literally I've said it before my monologues, they're going to be books. I have over 60, 70,000 of them. I'm going to make books and I'm going to publish. I'm trying to decide whether I want to self publish or publish through a publishing house, but I probably won't publish through a publishing house because I'm not about giving away my coins. Yeah, it's true. I'm not about, see with us, it just takes a little longer. But you are absolutely right. We have the fan base. We have people. People know you. I posted something of you and everybody was like, oh, I love him. I know him. He's this. He's that. And I forgot to tag you. And now, and they tagged you. And I was yeah, like, oh, yeah, you know? see, I was like, I'm already there. Like, I'm already known. 
And then also, because I usually don't post, I usually won't post anything that I can't tag. If I can't tag the person, I will not post it. Like, um, like right. there's only been a couple of guys because they get tagged a lot, so they don't allow you to tag them. So I'll put reshare IG and then their name. Then, um, but like you said, it we we are the blood life of the, of social media. Yeah, so, yep, yep. We're the we're the source we're the source of every platform. Yeah, and and they need us. But get this. They've always wanted to need African American and Caribbean content creators without having to pay us what we're worth. Yep. yep. See, see, exposure doesn't pay our bills. No. Nope. Exposure doesn't keep all these lights on. Exposure mm -hmm. didn't pay for this. This, my makeup, my crown. Exposure didn't pay for that. Yeah. You know? So I often like many times I say, no, but I wanted to tell you something. I remember, I want to say about a year and a half ago, I was, oh, no, two years ago, because I started doing heavily the, I started doing the first season of one-on-one -on -one with the Queen of Shade because I was fed up with Instagram. Mm -hmm. What happened was they were flagging me. They were telling me that my content couldn't be recommended. Mm -hmm. um, they were killing me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I left Instagram. And what happened was I had a really breakout year. 2018 was my breakout year. It was when I got my blue check. It was when I did 21 million likes. It was when it was a huge year for me. So on Instagram, and I got so upset that I was like, you know what? I'm going to delete this content. Mm -hmm. I, st I, I lied to you, not Yanzo. I started deleting. I deleted the entire year of 2018. I was mad. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was mad. Wow. What happened was this, an interface popped up in my phone through IG and said, keep, please keep your face still. We need to scan it. They scanned my face, Yanzo, and they said, this scan was completed to make sure that it was, the, it was really you trying to delete your content. I knew then I was important. I had trouble. I didn't care about the numbers. I stopped caring about the low hearts. I stopped caring about the no shares. I stopped caring about the comments because I knew I had gotten into their mainframe. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's true. It's true. Yeah, I don't even study the likes no more and stuff like that. That's mm -hmm. what they want you to think. Like, if it's low, then nobody sees you. But people actually see you. The right person actually sees you, you know? So, mm -hmm. yep, yep. So, listen, let me segue real quick. So... I turn around and you have been busy. I don't want you to reveal what you're working on. You have been busy, but mm -hmm. I don't see you as often as I used to. And I mean, I mean, not Instagram suppressing you. I mm -hmm. mean, one time I saw you that was, was different before you started posting recently. My cat is all over this room. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. He claims he doesn't like people, but when I don't show him attention, he starts climbing. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's so beautiful. He's a Russian blue. He starts uh -huh. climbing shit and looking at me. It's so funny. Anyway, back to what I was saying. No. Um, and I lost my train of thought because he climbed up on the freaking thing. But uh, that's all right. They're animals. I love him. I, I would never yeah. have seen him. He does his job. I do mine. No. Like, back to what I'm saying is just about what is going on with content creation. I haven't seen you a lot. I saw you doing something else. You had your own like huge like white truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were like driving around the island, and you're like, yeah. like, like removal of stuff, and we do this and we do that, uh -huh. and you know that's what I love because they don't like. Flash actually said this. Dallas said this. He was like, you know, you people keep taking my pages, but you don't understand. You're messing with my livelihood. Yeah. You take this money that we get from over here, and we put it over here. Exactly, you did something else, and like honestly, to be honest, I could speak for him. He doesn't need Instagram anymore. Like he has houses in Dubai. He has like two. I've been to his houses. He has two houses in Vegas. He's living proper. He's a he's humble. He's not a flashy guy. He's not gonna buy a, a Rolex. He's not gonna buy. He likes his bikes, you know. So getting to know him, he will always have money, and he doesn't need the app anymore, you know. But yeah, like he's just angry that people just try to mess with your library. Like, cause honestly, every time you get flagged, you make less money. Like, cause people less engagement and everything. So yeah, so that's like game. I'm smart as well. I'm investing my money in other things. Like, bought a truck, so I do like premium cargo. So if you have like, um, if you want to, if you're building a house, you have um, furniture you want to shift around, you want to transport it to X, Y, Z, wherever. I do that. 
Um, and I'm using that same truck for another project that I'm doing for myself, you know, so it should be done maybe by next year. So when that is done, I could have people come to St. Lucia and have a something <laughs> to, you know, chilling, you know? So, um, that's what I've been using my money for. I'm just focused on that. So I'm paying less attention to Instagram and stuff. So my goal, my goal was always to make online money and physical money. So I always considered online money. It's like, yeah, it's physical money coming to me, but it could stay there and accumulate. And I want physical money where people give me for like truck trips or I do photography. Cause remember I do photography. Um, if I do videography, um, the physical money. So I'm never going to say no to it or no on this one. Like, oh, that's peanuts. I don't want that. No, give it to me. Give it to me. Cause I love being busy. You know, so that's what I've been doing. An entrepreneur has multiple streams of income. That, that's the whole point. Yep. So funny. They see me on here and, and that's why I have, I have music. I have merchandise. I, I mm -hmm. told books. Like I, I do a lot. I have a mentoring program. Mm -hmm. and you know what's so funny? My mentoring program is what pays for all of this. Mm -hmm. Like literally. And they, and that's why I say I will always keep IG because they saw me on IG and then they saw that I was offering mentoring. And, and they applied. Yep. yep. Get this. One of my mentees, I have been making income because of this brilliant man who also became my best friend mm -hmm. since before the pandemic. He's been, and get this, ever, like, get this. I said, I don't want, and I told him, I said, you're my bestie. I've known you for years now, but I don't want any friends that mm -hmm. are not like you. Because you said, this, you said this in the beginning of the, of the conversation. Mm -hmm. He still pays me for my time. Exactly. He still okay. pays me for, he just sent me money last night. Like this is for our next session. And I'm like, and I said to myself, I had to do like, I, cause I take, I'm in therapy too. So I had to like talk to my therapist a couple of times and I'm like, and she's like, this is what you deserve. Exactly. This is what you, deserve. you don't have to do anything for free. This is your livelihood. Yes, you can do your good Samaritan deeds over there, but this is your livelihood. Take the mm -hmm. money. Take the money. Mm -hmm. And I was like, That's wow. Crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. No, go ahead. Say what you're saying. I'm saying, yeah, don't say it. I'm just agreeing with you. Don't say no to it. So, yeah. yeah but he's, yeah. this. his name is Vic. So Vic bought this dress. Oh. <laughs> Vic Shout out to you, Vic. Yeah. Let's end this week. Everything. Yeah, yeah. We just have to stay um, on top of things and always move with the, the motion because nothing's going to last forever. Not even Instagram is going to last forever. So they better watch out. Right. But yeah, yeah. That's what I've been busy doing. Um, life is life thing, you know? Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. I don't go personal life, but I haven't seen any, any significant others, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to even talk about that because we don't want to know that. Because the moment you say that, you know how it is in entertainment, they feel like a chance is lost and they use, mm -hmm. oh, he's already take, no, you always have to have, it's it, 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 like what it kills the fantasy or whatever, yep. you know, yep. that type kills of thing. Fantasy, kills the fantasy. Yeah. When, I'm, when I'm ready for that part in, um, in, in sharing the world, I'll be ready, you know, so if I want to do that part, I'll do that part, you know. Because I like giving different aspects of my life, maybe for different channels or different, oh. you know. And speaking of that, even on, um, there's something called OnlyFans TV. Huh? Oh, oh, I was going to say, I thought you, I was going to say something too. You, you talk about that in a second and then I'm going to ask you about YouTube because you just started a YouTube as well. Yeah, I started yeah, YouTube. So, yeah, so. On OnlyFans TV, tell me about it. Yeah, so know. OnlyFans TV is basically like YouTube. So I'm going to try to intertwine these two platforms to just post one thing. So it's going to be on YouTube. It's going to be on OnlyFans TV. And I realized with OnlyFans TV, it really gets you fans on OnlyFans because it's exclusive for OnlyFans creators. You need to be a creator to post on OnlyFans TV. And it's, uh, it's clean. So you just think of it as Instagram, YouTube, just posting if you're out there or whatever. And it, it drives traffic because you know, OnlyFans never really had a platform to get people to OnlyFans. You need to use Instagram, TikTok. Whatever to get to OnlyFans, but now they have their own, so you add that on. So I'm gonna do different things, long form videos where I feel like I could just actually just talk, not really because Instagram is too short form. The first three seconds matter, and after that, it's just like you know. So now you could have like more long forms, and maybe people get to know you better. 
people get to know what you're actually doing, you know? Yeah, because, yeah. because in the industry of commerce, people don't buy your product, they buy you. Yeah, yeah. People All the time. The feeling and the fantasy. Yeah, even even some creators, some the guys on Twitter, right? They He has more followers than me on Twitter, and he's always asking me, yo, how do I get more fans on OnlyFans? And I'm like, bro, I, could, I cannot answer that for you because people don't buy into OnlyFans. People buy into you yeah. on OnlyFans, you know? And then after a while doing it, you realize that no matter what you do, it's actually you they're buying into. You don't really have to go out there and do the most outrageous things immediately or whatever. Don't do a period for them to say, oh, let me follow this person. Because you're like burning yourself out if you keep doing things that you don't actually want to do. Yeah. I, have um, a, I have a confession to make. What's that? I'm an OnlyFans creator. Oh, really? You just wouldn't know it. That's true. <laughs> you have, your, you have your, your niche. Yeah, like I have, like, get it. I don't have a lot of content of me. That's why. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not, but like, I'm on only, I'm an OnlyFans creator. You just would never find it. You'll no. never find it. And it's not even your name or anything. So never. It's <laughs> so you know how to promote your thing. Never, <laughs> never, never, never know you won't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So how, how, does, how does one stumble on it? I'm not telling you shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not listen. I'm, nope, exactly. nope, nope, no, exactly. no kiss nope. and tell in here. Nope, nope, nope. Yep. Yep. But, yep. but you know what's so funny? I jo I joined years ago because I wanted to support my guys. Like that was the mm -hmm. reason why, but they made me do the whole process of your photo and your ID. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Verification and blah, blah, blah. You just might as well start your own thing. Yeah. 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 So I, um, I did, but you know, what's so funny too, though, one day there'll be comment there. There'll be content there. One Take day. Take your time. Yeah. One day there'll be. to you. Mm -hmm. People buy into you and they only buy into you. So I'm working on, I'm working on, um, because it's a fantasy. So the one that what I'm working on with that is more of a luxury design. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'll just say this, it's more of a, um, I always talk about how I enjoy escorts and mm -hmm. for pay men. That's, that's usually who I, you know, I hang with and I, you know, gratify myself with. Mm -hmm. So, I turn around and I just, there will be in the future, but it's, it's kind of like this idea of paying for it. Mm -hmm. It's like, my thing is I want to talk more about that. I want to show the world that because I have several men that I have known forever and I've met new ones that are escorts that are gay for pay. Mm -hmm. And the world wants to act like, Oh, that's so horrible. That's terrible. You're gay. And it's like, no, he's not. No, he's mm. not. No, he's not. He's not. Pay. Yeah, he's an entrepreneur. Mm. He's an mm. entrepreneur. So I plan to do something with that platform that is geared more towards that and mm. more towards being me being the one that pays because that's what I that's the whole point. So I'm already saying too much because then people are gonna go look. But yeah, like mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Like uh, one of one of my plans as well, um, is um maybe you know, in America, like all the people that I met are OnlyFans creators. Maybe they could come to the Caribbean and do their own content. Maybe I could help them film it or tell them the locations to go and this and that. See if there, boom, now you have a different background, different scenery. It's not going to be buildings, it's going to be bush now, it's going to be waterfalls and um, beaches and stuff like that. Because St. Lucia is very, it's a very secluded island. So you can get, as long as you have the vehicle, you can go to spots and learn things and be free with taking your photos, your videos, or whatever. So maybe I could create a shift and become like a director and also i don't know just thinking about why not, why not? Ra raheem shabazz did yeah, the, the guy you interviewed right no i didn't interview him he's very shy but then years passed and he started doing interviews but he's a huge content creator in our in my world the gay community uh -huh. and, uh, i will i will send you his information because just to look at just to admire how he did it he uh -huh. literally, like, he he started it, then he and he started it, and then he started going to Brazil. Mm -hmm. And he got all those content creators in Brazil. And mm -hmm. it, it blew him up here in the States, and then he launched his own company. And um, then, yeah, he has his own company, and it's huge. He has millions, like, all of his Twitter stuff, millions of views, millions of followers. So he directs them? 
Um, well, he's in them now, but he's moving toward direction. That's what mm-hmm. I. That's what I don't know him personally. Okay, get this. Mm-hmm. I have his phone number. He has mine, but he's busy. I'm busy. We mm-hmm. don't really ships pass in the night. We 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 say hi. We say bye. But that's what it is. Like it's not really a relationship. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in the so, beginning. Yeah, but yeah, stuff like that. So like, I like viewing these people kind of see what they're doing yeah. and probably bring it to where I'm at because there's a yeah. lot that could be done in different parts of the world because only fans creators, creators in general just like creating content. Yeah. You know, and sometimes a diff a shift in scenery could be very good for them and like, oh boom, 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 you know? Yeah. So that's, that's like, what I mean. He's a mastermind at what he did. He's a Libra too. That's why I love him. Um but yeah, I was I was gonna reach out to him and ask him for an interview, but I just I haven't because I like what he does and I want to leave it that way. Like I asked him before and he told me he was really shy talking about himself mm-hmm. and I respect that. Send me a song in the chat. This yeah, me yeah, um, yeah, I'm going to send you. Oh, and this, this, is, this is the kicker. So he started his own website, right? But mm-hmm. he's had, um, he's had only fans for years. He literally has only needed to market his only fans for 1099. He doesn't do any pay pay per view. Wow. He, Oh, he doesn't do any pay per view. He mm. literally marketed, and I asked him about it, and and that was in a conversation. I will send them to you. Um, I asked him, I'm like, why don't you do pay per view? He was like, listen, I'm worried about that. He's like, everybody sees it, everybody knows it's ten dollars. He like he he's giving back. Yeah, and basically. And because of that. Yeah. Like awesome, he, man. yeah. As far as content creation goes in the gay community, he's our king. Mm-hmm. Rahim. Rahim Shabazz. I'm gonna say don't worry, I'm gonna send it to you. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna send it to you because he is he literally is our king. Like I've and I've never seen someone do it better. I've mm-hmm. never seen someone do it better. Is he is he is he black, right? He's black, right? Yes, yes, okay. he is. Well, most definitely. Mm-hmm. And uh that's what I, I love about him because he's done things. Uh, he's done things with uh, content creators like yourself that are heterosexual. Mm-hmm. And like they'll come and they'll do different things like that. You guys will hang out. He actually worked with Dallas. He did, he, he worked with Dallas. Dallas oh, went yeah. to it a while ago. Dallas went to um, California, Los Angeles. What well, is the guy with the crown? Uh, no, no, no. That's Jacoby. Ooh, Jacoby. That's Jacoby. We love oh, Jacoby. No, no. That's Jacoby. Yeah, yeah. Now receive your crown. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, Jacoby. That's well, no, uh, Flash worked with Raheem and mm-hmm. it was like it was like fantasy stuff. You know, Raheem kind of had he because he did it for his company. So he was putting together a company. So he did a, like the solo and, and filmed you know, a flash doing it, Dallas. Mm. And it was amazing. So, and I, I remember he's such a director too. Cause one of the guys that was there that was kind of like behind the scenes, just kind of like helping out. You heard right here say to him, don't stare at him. Don't mm. stare. Don't stare. Don't stare. Yeah. 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 And the guy was just like, <laughs> just staring at him. Yeah. Oh, wait. You work with somebody whom I love as well. You did a collaboration. They call him Noel, but his name isn't Noel. I don't know what, like, I'll just say his online name. Hercules the Demon. Yeah. Hercules. Oh, yeah, Hercules, yeah. Yeah, for a second, I forgot his real name. What the hell? Uh, I yeah, so, so, so get, yeah, so get that. We'll call him Hercules. So get this. Mm-hmm. I met Hercules years ago. Hercules mm-hmm. gave me a six-month free membership to his OnlyFans when he met me. Mm-hmm. And what I love about him is he's another one that he's a busybody. He's a Pisces. He's a yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. He's about his money, his, his yeah. business. Yeah. I care about people think. Yeah. But what Pretty I, cool guy. Yes. But what I like about him most is when he needs advice. He comes to you. True. Yeah. yeah. I think now, I think now all of us, me, him, Flash, all these people should start doing like interviews. Yes. You know, to show like uh, what we went through to be or at and. Yeah. Where we're currently at, and that kind of has more, you know, more. I would say clean content, but like showing people that yeah. we're both, you know, you're not gonna just find us on Twitter. But I really appreciate his little short films. Like he put, like people interview him with the mic and stuff. Like I wish he did more of those too, you know. Yeah, you know, no, and, and did it. It would be great for you guys to have podcasts. I oh, I forgot. Oh, yeah. I have three of them. I have three. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking to. I have all the equipment for the podcast as well, but I just have to come up with a theme too. 
every week to talk about something, you know? So I'm working on that as well. What I, you know what I did? I literally, just like now, we're not talking. We're, t- we're just talking. Yeah. That's exactly what I did with the podcast. Whatever I was feeling. And I have, I, my one podcast has 280 episodes all over 35, 40 minutes. Like I just, I just talk. Like I, I talk about my life. I talk about other things I, mm-hmm. you know, but, but mostly what has gotten me the success that I enjoy is I talk about me. Like I don't go, I don't, I'm not external with it. I, I yeah. don't. I, yeah. I, was talked about me. I talked about my life. I talked about different things like that. But I wanted to say this recently before I change segue. Uh, Herc, he wrote me a couple months ago, and he was like, "Where are you located?" Because he, he was like, "I'm in Vegas." Because I was supposed to move to Vegas uh, yeah, a couple of years ago, and he knew that. So he's like, "When you get out here, you know, we can talk, we can collaborate, we can do something." So I'm like, at that time, I didn't know he was big. Like he was only fans, but he got big. He got real big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, super big. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. and I, everybody loves him, and they should. So what happened was, um, he when he wrote me, he was like, "Where are you? Where?" I'm like, "I'm in Philadelphia, child, but I'm getting ready to leave." He was mm-hmm. like, and he said to me, "I don't know where to go," because he had started dancing at clubs. He had yeah, 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 the Magic Mike thing. Yeah. So get this. I told him, I was like, and, and this is another thing, and this is this is also for you too. Um, dancing should also be a part of your repertoire. Because mm-hmm. people- yeah, I was I always wanted to. When I went to Vegas, I asked him about it, but I guess he was too busy because he's a busy body. Like, how do they do it? Like, because it looks fun, like the Magic Mike shows, and you know, it's a cool vibe. I remember this guy, the movie guy, he started doing that as well. Um, Channing Tatum, yeah. you know, that's all in Vegas, right? So, yeah, yeah. I just need to get a link to know who could make me go try it out or something like that. It'll be funny. So get this. He asked me. He was like. You know, I'm in Vegas. He was like, but where else should I go? And I told him, I was like, are you kidding me? You're a heterosexual man, gorgeous, Mm. masculine, tall. I was like, you need to go to West Hollywood. Mm. I was like, you need to go to West Hollywood. All them gay bars, all them people that will put dollars. I was like, they will. I said, you'll make a killing. Do you know the next week I looked at his Instagram? You and me. Thank you, West Hollywood. You were great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He listens. He went. He literally went. And I smiled at him. I said, because that's what I like. Like, because even for me, part of my job is if I give you some advice, take it. Take Mm -hmm. it. Apply it. Apply it. Yeah. You. See, what I love about you is you being a heterosexual content creator, you're still so open-minded. In those settings, like, yeah, you have to be. And you're Mm -hmm. right. In those settings... You, if you danced in West Hollywood at a mm-hmm. gay club, you would never mm-hmm. come back. You would never go home. Mm-hmm. No, so yeah, because I met up. I met up with um. I don't know if you know B Scott. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I, I met up with B Scott. We had um drinks together. We had a cool time at a bar. He took me to like I think I don't know if it's West Hollywood. I don't really know, but it was. I think it was more on the the name is not coming to mind right That's now. Okay. But it's in Hollywood area, but yeah. more the rich side of things. Yeah, he's and so it, yeah. It, it was like yeah. a, a strip, a strip of like it's a gay location, right? And then I'm thinking like probably there's a lot of stuff that creators like me could do there, intertwine with people and get to know links there and this and that and blah blah blah. Since I know him now, he has his links as well. He's a really nice person. You know, and I was like, when I met him, I was expecting to see him like with the hair and everything. And he came regular. And I was like, oh, oh, is that you? He's like, yeah, like, I don't have to pee. You know, yeah. <laughs> he no, really he's, nice. a, he's a great individual. Um, yeah, really, really. I had the pleasure. I had the pleasure of speaking to him when I first started YouTube. He mm-hmm. wrote me one line because, you know, he, he really is Hollywood. He really is. He's a genius. And he wrote mm-hmm. me one line on my YouTube and he said, I love everything about you. And that was mm-hmm. the, the transaction that we had. So, you know, I'm glad that you're getting in and you're meeting influential people. Uh, yeah, I love that too. Because Keeping connections and use not using them, but like collaborating or if you know. How about you, this word? Like, you know? How about this word? Benefiting uh, from your connections. Yeah, benefiting. Yeah, I don't want to say okay. using, but benefiting. Yeah, benefiting from your connections. You mm-hmm. have to, should, but yeah, look, Enzo, that's so crazy because you're doing what you're doing in Saint Lucia, 
but you definitely should be dancing here in the States. So yeah. that's another thing you got to try to carve out. You got to yeah. find time because that's the thing. But yeah, you should have, you should have. Yeah. And that's the thing too, whenever I go to America, to the States, that's like I come to create new links, new benefits, new people that could show me, oh, you could do this, oh, this, you could do that, blah, blah, blah. You know, I don't just go there to go, ah, let me go relax. It's fun to do that for like two, three, four days, but it's more about just connecting with who I want to connect with. It's like, yeah, boo, I have a lot to offer. You have a lot to offer. Let's collaborate. You know, you could come to St. Lucia now. You have a spot in St. Lucia. St. Lucia is the biggest application destination currently. A lot of people talking about it. We have the biggest, um, we have the fastest female run in the world right now. Things are popping in the country. You understand? So yeah, you could come here and chill. I got a nice view. We got locations. We could go to beaches, whatever. So the sky's the limit with, beneficial connections do you know do you know what my dream is for my career i've worked so hard to build it to what it is i've faced adversity you know there are some people that don't like me and they've tried to do things to me all of us do you know but that comes with the territory but you know what i've worked so hard at this because i want to be able to i can like now i can close this laptop and go anywhere in the world and work exactly Mm -hmm. that was the point that mm-hmm. was the key point. So, you know, I always wanted to, I'll just tell you one of my things, um, because I'm a singer and I really, and I'm just going to say it because everybody knows that I've been singing for 32 years of my life. Mm-hmm. I'm good. I'm very good. If you've heard my music, you've heard. I'm very good. Mm-hmm. So I'll have to send you that too. But um, I wanted to travel to different destinations and kind of sing and perform and film it. Mm-hmm. And then offer it through my website as kind of like a pay per view kind of thing. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I always wanted to do that. I, I'm giving that to the world because I have other ideas. But, you know, that's what I wanted to do because it was like, you know, I have this unique voice and ability. And I always felt like building stages, and I don't mean like huge stages. I, I mean, like, I saw the, um, the Met, the opera. Uh, house do it they went to like Ireland and they built like a stage outside and you could stand on and it was in the mountains and it had microphones on the ends and all the singers were like singing and Mm -hmm. I was like that's exactly what I want to do travel the world and what I love about it is being an entrepreneur the trip gets written off part of the trip gets written off for work Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's literally learning to, to live as an entrepreneur and a lot of my babies, I'm trying to teach them. They got to book my, they got to book my course, but um, and mentoring. But yeah, it's a, it's teaching them to be at large is what I call it because literally we should content creation. Like I love it about like Dallas is a perfect example. He is all over the world, all everywhere. All, like and get it. I was, I was so I cheer him on so much because I remember how people treated him, and I'm like. Oh my God. And for him to win and he keeps winning, because, like you said, because of his kind heart and me. Yeah, very humble. Yeah, very humble. Running under the Eiffel Tower. They call it Eiffel Tower in France, but mm. running under the Eiffel Tower, shirtless. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, I stood right there. I got to get back. I got to get back. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, again, it just takes me back to like, even I enjoy seeing these things like where creators could just openly just be themselves, man. Just taking all of us away, like, you know, and wanting to flag us. But again, I'm just thinking about the Instagram thing because yeah, I enjoy seeing him flash. Everybody just having a good time around the world and showing that support, you know, our love, you know, doing their thing. Yeah. And you know what? That's a, that's a great thing. And I love that you have stayed home, but your business is going to grow. You're smart. Yeah. yeah. Very smart. That's true. It's only up from here. It has to. Again, when I travel, again, it's more connections, more seeing what I could do in that part of the world. Or let's make it work, you know, let's make it work because I'm on the internet now. So I could be anywhere. I could work from anywhere, you know. So, yeah. And I want you to also set your sights when you're making European connections too, because I know, I know a guy who was a flat out, he was flat out. Um, he worked with the companies. His name is Francois Sagat. And he, mm-hmm. if you look him up, he's an older, he's like, a, he was, came out a while ago, older, um, adult entertainer, but Sagat, he worked with all the different companies, like all the houses and different things like that. He's an amazing man. He's a beautiful man. He gives that masculine presenting presence as well. Mm-hmm. And what happens is I've seen him walk runways in France. 
That's mm -hmm. why that's why I'm so adamant about interviewing content creators and more exclusively adult content creators because mm -hmm. only America seems to be condemning. The rest of the world, I've seen them have whole careers. I remember a time in America where being a content creator or an adult film star was a great thing. I watched like all, we had all these like gay movies that they made for us. Like it was called like another gay movie was actually the name of the movie. And you had like amazing gay porn stars and actors and things, and they would cameo in the movie. And those were some of the greatest movies I'd ever seen. Hollywood doesn't make them anymore. Really? Mm -hmm. Political climate, Hollywood. I got to find that CD, that DVD, because literally that was like one of my favorite movies. And it, like, you know, we're in a day and age now where I see a lot of content creators having to be open minded. And I love it because it's not like people need to understand it is no longer I'm um, straight. It's I need to make my money. And one, I have one guy who's gay for pay. His name is Sean Costin. And mm -hmm. I love him. He's such an amazing man. He recently had something bad happen. So I told you, like you were saying, don't tell people where you are, your location. Well, nothing like that. He's mending from a fight that he had that was really, really bad. But um, he's another one that, you know, he's gay for pay. And I, I came across his content years ago as a young gay. I'm talking like 20, 21, 22. Mm -hmm. 24, 25. And then he's been to my platform twice. I, we talk like he's a friend and, you know, he's another one where I brought him up because he, uh, he mentioned, he was like, you know, you have to understand the climate of OnlyFans. Men subscribe to OnlyFans. Women, oh, women don't buy porn. They mm -hmm. don't. So he, he expressed on my platform and it did very well. He was like, when you are on OnlyFans, your subscribers are male. And he mm -hmm. was like, treat them with kindness and respect, you mm -hmm. know, and, and get it. And he said to me, if you treat them with respect, they'll treat you with respect. And that's how he does it. He doesn't have to say, oh, I'm straight or oh, I'm this. No, you're not yeah, saying, uh, yeah, he treats mm -hmm. them with respect and they in turn treat him respect. And he's, he's purely gay for pay, purely. Mm -hmm. Like he's gay for pay, like seriously. And uh, he does escorting as well. And, you know, he's one that I'm going to, like I like with him, when he had something bad happen, I wasn't able to rally around him. Mm -hmm. and, I, like, and, I, and I haven't spoken to him since because I just didn't know how to have that conversation because he needed us. Like he really needed us. And a lot of us were not able to mm -hmm. get to him the way that we needed to. But he's always in my prayers and thoughts because that's who's going to be by my side. Like when I do stuff and I turn around and I'm doing this, this, that, and the other, and my content goes live on OnlyFans, mm -hmm. I will be, yeah, I'll be pulling him in and, and others like him. So, but it's going to, you know, you know, it's going to be classy, Yannick. You know, I'm not playing. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, be an experience. And the reason why I haven't mentioned it is because I need Europe to do it. We need to be able to travel. I need to be able to get on the train, go to London. I need to be able to get on the train, go to Italy. Like, yeah, you have to be in the environment to do these yeah. things. You can't be stationed in one place. And yeah, yes, you need yes. to include that luxury or whatever you're trying to do. Yeah. Yes, and that's that's the thing. Like, because I want, and I'm just going to be honest, like, I want the whole, like, I don't want to give away my my idea. Mm -hmm. But um, it's this whole idea of, of the day. Like, mm -hmm. you hire the escort. Mm-hmm. Do you do the day before it happens, you know, before you get what you paid for the dance, the fantasy of what they are to you? Because, you know, when you have escorts, you call. Well, I do. I don't usually do the ones off the street. So you call the agency and you're saying they ask you, what kind of fantasy do you desire? And you're mm -hmm. like, oh, I want the, you know, I want the Prince Charming or I want the boyfriend one or I want the I just met you backstage. Like you can you set up the fantasy, you set up the desire. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know how to do that. But, you know, me, I worked as a phone sex agent, a female phone sex agent with my voice. I mm -hmm. remember that back in 07, 08, and 09. Mm -hmm. I the girl. So I got to learn a lot about fantasy and a lot about mm -hmm. how to create them. So I'm going to do it for myself the same way I did with the Queen of Shades. There's a market for that as well. And there's like, and if as like as a creator, if you know how to create scenes, like boyfriend for the day, like you said, met you backstage, you could master 
being a online creator on OnlyFans because you have different settings or looks to whatever you. It's all about. It, 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 what I'm trying to say is that if you read more like books or look at plays more, you could implement that into your OF or whatever platform you have, and then kill it because people always thrive off fantasies. Or just being nude, but like a fantasy of at work, a fantasy in the hospital, a fantasy of in the supermarket, a fantasy of something like that, you know? So, yeah. yeah. So right. And that's what I'm going to tap into because I was actually called a fantasy girl. That was mm. the title when I worked at the phone sex air place. I was mm. a fantasy girl. And this is the thing, Yannick. I did everything. I did BDSM. I was a dominatrix. I did, yeah, I, I did barely legal girls. I just turned 18. I remember mm. uh, in one of my fantasies. <laughs> okay. I'm very vivid. Mm. In one of my fantasies, he wanted a young girl. And I had to be at least 18 years old. Mm -hmm. But I dressed her in like a yellow sundress. I dressed her in mm -hmm. detail. Yeah. And then I fucked his brains out in the fantasy on the Ferris wheel. You know, like, it, like yeah, boom, and yeah. I remember my boss shaking her head like, how did you even come up with that? But mm -hmm. I, I'm that way. I'm there. I've always been a creative. So yeah, I can, yeah. I can make like, it's, what's making, it's true. Cause what's making um a lot of money in that industry um yeah. is Putting in your bio, I'm 18, or if you're like cougar, that you're like 50 something or 40 something years older, milk type of thing, or interracial. Yeah. So if you can do fantasies like that, speaking like all that stuff, yeah. Yeah. Mine are gonna be, mine are gonna be luxury. When I mm -hmm. tell you, I'll, 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 I'll be laying on backdrops in the south of France, on the Riviera, like flying to the Maldives. Like I'm the, but that requires money, and I'm still working. I'm still yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, I ain't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. coming to come. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I do like, and and that's what people need to understand. Like, it's also a reason I walked away from mainstream entertainment because there were a lot of things I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And entertainment is very restrictive. They told me when I walked away from the modeling, when I walked away from the, the uh, record label deals, they told me I was crazy. They told me I was stupid. They told me I'd never garner the attention. I'd never be seen or heard. And they were wrong. Mm -hmm. They were wrong. So yeah, there are a lot of things I want to do. And that's a part of my life. That's a part of my life that I enjoy. I'm a very sexual being. You know, right now I'm celebrating 12 years of celibacy. And 12 years of celibacy only happened because I was building my empire. Yeah, the shit you, keep yourself be, you keep yourself busy. Um, you, you do what you have to do. You're not like just on the wayside, just chilling. You know, no idle hands on the wrong thing. Um, but yeah, yeah. Being busy is really good. It feels really good for me personally. I love feeling like doing something I actually want to do. So I'm not focused on like, oh, okay, maybe I have to do that then. You know? Yeah. So I understand the vibe. You, Mister, have to keep listen. Stay on Instagram. If they delete you or me, we'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be right back. We'll be right back. <laughs> so we'll be right back. And yeah, like, yeah. I, my name will be I am the Queen of Shade 2.0. That's, yeah, that's exactly. Really and what still, we still have to shed light on, we still have to tell people what's going on because sometimes people want us to remain quiet. Like, why are you only talking about the flags? No, but you have to do it as well because if we don't say it, that means these Instagram people, whites or whatever, will continue to suppress us. Yeah. You know, so we have to speak out. That's what I'm using threads for because I don't see threads as anything important, really. I don't know what to see on threads. I'm not going to use, oh, I got flat today or maybe something personal, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, you know. But you know, I've gotten to a point in my career that whenever they do something to me and I post it and publicize it, they undo it. Mm. Mm. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes that happens. Yeah. That happened many times. They'll say, oh, your, your account was blocked or this. I got flagged for a young man wearing uh, compression shorts the other day, compression mm -hmm. type. And he's beautiful. He was new to my page. And he was very happy to be new to my page because, you know, when I, I'm, I'm birthing bitches out here. When I show you, um, the world sees everybody you. Everybody sees you. Yeah. So he was very happy to be there and they took the one post down, but I put several of his other posts up there to keep him in rotation. Right. But this is the thing. No one can stop us. And you have your own website too, right? Because I have my own website too. That's no, my I have to do that. 
it's in my link in bio because for some reason my link in bio from Linktree wouldn't work. So I mm. had to actually create a web page on my website that is like a link in bio that mm. I put on everything, but it's through my site. So it never gets flagged because it's right through my actual website. And then it has all my links. Go here, go here, go here. This world is going to trip when I launch my OnlyFans. I'm just thinking about that. <laughs> it's going to trip. It's going to trip. They're going to trip. They're going to trip. But that's all right. I'm glad I'm, I'm one of the first you spoke. You are. The, the, the OnlyFans are. launched. I feel privileged. It was you, and uh, you were yeah. the only person. Yeah. Told. Uh, you why? Because that's I, I admire you a lot, Yanni. Oh, yeah. thank you. You're a beautiful man. You're an intelligent man. You are worthy of money and worthy of attention and admiration and adoration. You have the best hands, the best face, the best feet, the best other things I've ever seen. <laughs> You know, I had to I had to go over here because it's YouTube. So <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get us flagged on YouTube. <laughs> you know, you're a beautiful man, and and what I love is I love how and this is another thing. Keep doing this. You'll take and you do. I love it. I love when you do this. You'll do the videos where you're talking about bananas or watermelon or mm. men. You do the fruit and like yeah, fruit thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, that's and, the and nobody's the paying attention to the yeah, watermelon, yeah. mind you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was on your page yesterday, and I was looking because I read comments. Everybody does. Yeah, everybody and does somebody that. had a banana. They put the gift up there where it was the banana with the black and white follow it, like like hypnotized. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, and I'm, I crack up because we're all adults. We know what you do. Exactly. Oh. So you like play on stuff because obviously yeah. I'm not going to come nude on Instagram, but right. play on stuff. I can't even say the word, but that's how you know, so ta- Yeah. Like it's make it funny. Make it, you know, not really in your face, but like, is it like, hey. I see it, you know, so I love doing that kind of content. It's really engaging. It makes you want to comment or share it, you know? Yes. Yeah. So I won't stop. I'll try to be more creative with different fruits yes. and seasons. Hey. So. Get this. They flagged me for one video I shared of you, but they left. I, I shared it more than once and they, they left it up. But it was the one, you'll remember this one. It was so good. It was the one where you were pretending to be an R&B singer. And you rip the pants off in the shirt and you have on like the, 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 the yellow, the yellow, the yellow song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, Oh my God. I have that on my computer. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saved that one. I was like, yeah. wow. Like, but that's the thing. Like, get this. The world cannot condemn content creators because the reason why I even started with content creators was because of my experience at the phone sex place. Everybody's doing it. Exactly. Why are you going to condemn one of my boys because he's teaching you to do it better? You're, he's, you're learning from, shut up and learn from him. Exactly. Learn from him. It's a billion dollar business. It is. And you know what's so crazy? Entertainment as a whole. It is a part of the entertainment umbrella. Acting, modeling, singing. Everything singing. Yep. Yep. It's entertaining. We serve the public. Period. We serve the public. It's what we do. And we provide fantasies for the public to escape from their mundane nine to five lifestyle what we're here for exactly and then and more so that like you know because i'm not a creator to shove it down your face I'm, I'm not a creator to be like all right subscribe to my page for 5.99 and i don't you know like i if you want that it's there so you go look for it yourself so it creates like a because what i realized too like just today i was on tiktok and i was scrolling through this girl's page and obviously tiktok you have to be clothed and stuff like that and whatnot and her uh, the the post that she had was something like her compression shorts was too tight and her camel toe was showing, right? So it just made me click her Instagram and the Instagram was normal and then I clicked the link tree and usually I like to do it. You know, I, just, I don't want to go straight into it. So obviously I click the link tree, I see OnlyFans, but I go to Twitter and I see the Twitter and like that means her OnlyFans is probably bomb because if she's doing that on Twitter, that means... But I, you never think that from TikTok because it's so clean to Instagram clean and then you go to Twitter to like, ooh, and then I'm sure OnlyFans is wow. You know, so the, the fantasy, like the build up, 
the build up. So that's what I think I'm gonna do on my page now is more because Instagram is flagging me for dumb shit now. So I wanna do cool stuff like TikTok and then let people click and they be like, oh wow, you know. So I, I do stuff that I like. So if I like it, then other people will like it too because I know beauty. I love beauty, yes. male or female. You know, I just love seeing beautiful people do things. You know, it's it's funny, it's sexy, it's everything. It's sweet, you know. So I just like seeing it. So and it inspires me to continue creating. You know, you know so what? That's my plan. You're absolutely right because I post you guys on my page because when my work gets hard or mundane or they're messing with me and things like that, I actually am rejuvenated when I see beautiful people. Yep. Yeah. It feels, yep. It fills your cup up. Yes. That's I feel. That, that second win because it's like, wow, beautiful people really live in this world and you know, they're from all over. Yeah. It's, it's why I post you guys because mm -hmm. like you guys are kind of like my commercial break. You guys are kind of like my commercial break. Everyone, everyone needs that. Yes. Whether you work in a lawyer's office, everybody follows you, you know, so then they want it. So why prevent it? Why? We're not, we're not in people. You know, and we're not doing illegal, we're not robbing people. We're just entertainers trying to make you relieve some stress. Whether it be laughter or whether it be something <laughs> a bit more freaky, freaky, you know, so yeah, entertainment. Either way. It still releases the dopamine in the brain. It still releases it. Yep. It's true. Either it's way. true. Thank you so much. I have enjoyed this conversation with you. We flew. Mm. We flew. Uh, like, just talking. Yeah, just talking. Yeah. No it's scripts, no anything. Just talking. Yeah, it's fun talking to you. It's fun Thank talking you. to you. Yeah. yeah. You'll have to do it more. I usually send my number, but uh, what I don't know what the rate is for St. Lucia to America. The rate for what type of number? And like, no, because you there's no like, rate. There's no rate. As long as, as long as you have a, your data plan, I have my data plan, you have my number. We just oh, connect. Well, cool. Okay. Yeah, so I was looking for your number. I was like, oh yeah, how do I don't, I don't have your number? Because honestly, Instagram gets crazy, like the DMs and stuff like yes. that. If you message me, it just goes, but I have to be scrolling, scrolling, yes. scrolling. And we we're just talking about that. You don't know who follows you, right? Yes. So I'm like, it's been a while since I went through my requests and I had some yes. politicians from my country following me. You know, so I'm like, wow, pe important people. So it's hard to keep a breath. So uh -huh. you need to have my number. I am sending you mine right now. Send it right now. Yeah. You'll see it. But no, it's it's so funny. Like, I had a situation happen where a lot of my numbers got misplaced and I had to get a new phone. So I'm just building it all over again. It's no problem. Like, yeah. like this is my job. So get this. Um, First season, I asked you because you were here. I said, give me three words that inspire and empower you. Well, season two is different. I now mm -hmm. say, um, make a wish and say it out loud, charge it in the atmosphere so that it comes back to you. So if you could wish for anything in the world, what would it be? I wish for consistency. I wish three of them, right? No, you can do, you can, well, you can do as many as you want because you're young. Okay, so. okay, yeah. So I really wish for consistency and longevity. and. Um, I wish that um, people around me just feed off this positive energy. Yeah, I'm going to stick to that. Yeah. Nice and short. You are very positive. And Yanzo, yeah. you're beautiful. And we all love you. Mm -hmm. love I love you too. I, I know you do. You yeah. Uh. <laughs> no. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard. The vocal stylings of Mr. Yannick Yanzo Thomas. <laughs> yeah, the, the applause gets me every time. It gets me every time. Don't go away. So did you enjoy? Was the conversation everything you thought it would be? It was for me. I love catching up with my friends. It was absolutely amazing. So if you thought it was amazing, please continue to watch, comment, like, and share. And most of all, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I love you. And I do this for you. Good, wholesome content about self-love, self-confidence, and self-healing. The Queen of Shade loves you all. Remember my name, the Queen of Shade. Mwah. Please subscribe to the Queen of Shades YouTube today for over.
1,000 original videos created by the Queen herself. Subscribe today.